dangerous bunny, the Brixton boy. I started boxing at the age of 13, going up to 14, and then I've been boxing for about 13 years now. Ted is all around that. The joy about him is very rare. You've got a boxer who's got both. You know, he can box, he can fight, and um, his punching power is tremendous. Before I get in a ring, I feel nervous, and, and then I cover up with uh, calmness, and I try just to work my technique. I go plan A and plan B. If this don't work, I'll try plan B. This fight is very important to Ted because if he loses, it's a long job. But when he does win, he's got a world title shot. I believe I will be a world champion. Let the show begin. A real air of confidence from Ted there, James. Now you've been preparing him for this fight. How are you feeling right now? Feeling very confident at this moment. And what kind of preparations have you been making for the fight? Well, this is the first time we've been away for two weeks to prepare for any fight. So, you know, I've been down south and on the seafront, train at four in the morning and twice in the gym. Very cold, I should think, at four in the morning on the beach at South End, yeah? Well, London is a lot warmer. <laughs> that is dedication for you. What do you know about silver? We don't really know a lot, but we watch a couple of rounds of him on tape, and that's good enough for us. OK, and what are your final words to Ted going to be just prior to the fight? Just go out and do what he's going to do. OK, real confidence in you there, Ted. Uh, how are you feeling right now? Feeling good. Yeah? Yeah. Looking good as well. Uh, what would you like to say to Silver? Oh, well, nothing much. Just the best person I win. Indeed. Well, let's have a look at Silver and how you compare. OK, as we've seen from the uh, Bami camp, they seem pretty confident tonight. Um, do you think they should be confident? Do you think uh, Ted Bami's got, uh, got, got, a, got a good a chance he thinks he has? Yeah, I think so. He's an all-action type fighter, Bami. And also he's trained by James Cook, who's former European champion as well, and so he's no mug. They've got, they've got a good camp. Yeah, he's had some good victories. He's beat the likes of Francis Barrett, Michael Smythe. Um, you know, he's had some good victories behind him. I think he'll, he'll sort this kid out tonight. The kid's having his 100th fight. Bit of a novelty, but uh, Ted Bami, uh, for me, I'd put my mortgage on this, uh, on on him winning this fight. Yeah, that confident. Yeah. Spencer, he needs this, doesn't he? This is his um, hopeful. I mean, has he been guaranteed a title shot? If He's he got a guaranteed this? title shot against Colin Lyons after this for the IBO title. Colin Lyons, of course, boxing later on on top of the bill. So th this is a no lose situation. I mean, he's only lost two fights, both of them on stoppages. Once early on in his career against a guy called Jack Belsky. And then secondly against Samuel Malinga, who's an excellent fighter from, uh, from South Africa. So but both times has been stopped. So there may be a little bit of sus um, suspects around the chin. But, you know, we'll see here this evening. But it's a no-lose situation. He needs to win this to get a shot at um, Colin Lyons. OK, now, the fella he's up against, he's 42. This is his centenary fight. Not many people get to 100 fights, do they? No, they don't. People in this uh, you know, arena today should be privileged because you don't see many fights. Many fighters who get to their 100th fight, I tell you. And that, it, is an, uh, that is a hell of an achievement, Spencer. And he's it? also mixed in very good company as well. He's boxed for the world title himself, WBC world title, against a guy called Hangul Gonzalez. And he was a real good fighter. You remember, you remember yeah. Gonzalez, real tough guy. And, and he lost on points. He's so. still competitive. I mean, out of the last six fights, he's won five, five, five of those fights. So he's still competitive. His name's Kojak. He's probably coming to the ring with a lollipop in his mouth, and yeah, I wish him well. Thank you very much, Richie. And on that, we're going to have a very short break, but we'll be right back with the big fight. everyone you're at the international center brentwood for international boxing before the next fight let me quickly remind you that if you have an opinion on the upcoming fight who looks shaky who's performing well or 
if you've got a prediction outcome, then why not send us a text? If your thoughts, all you've got to do is start your text with the word studio, then your message, including your name and hometown. Send all that to 80088, and we could be showing your thoughts and comments in between rounds. All that to come, let's get the boys in the ring. Here's John. Ladies and gentlemen, Fight Night Live here on Bravo. Let's get the action underway. Please welcome to the ring now. From Buenos Aires, Argentina, Ricardo Silva. So here we have Ricardo Daniel Silva from the Los Pulverines area of the Argentine capital city, Buenos Aires, having, as we've established, his 100th fight tonight. That is a nose that has seen 99 fights. And if things get boring, we're going to read out every single fight he's had. This boy has had more fights than Dave McCauley's had Ulster Fries. <laughs> 99 fights, unbelievable. Uh, that's not very often that happens because uh, I haven't heard of anybody. The closest to that, to my knowledge, is uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. I think he had 80 odd or 90 odd, but uh, he didn't have 100 fights. There's no way. This guy must go into the Guinness Book of Records. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring from Brixton, South London. It's dangerous, Ted Bambi. Ted Bambi's got the fan club here tonight, which is good. Dangerous. Now, interesting little story about Ted. He was born in Zaire and is actually a refugee from that country. It was racked in his early years by civil war. His dad sent him out of the country to live with an uncle in Brixton when he was just 12 years of age. He's lived with his uncle ever since. In fact, he calls his uncle, he's known, he calls his uncle dad now. Sad to relate, he doesn't even know whether his real dad is still alive or not. It was his uncle who introduced him to the boxing game at the age of 15. And here he is now, fighting out of Brixton, born in Zaire. Both boys in the ring, let's hear from John. Ladies and gentlemen, Eight rounds international light welterweight contest. Introducing to you, firstly and fighting out of the red corner is our visitor from Buenos Aires, Argentina, wearing the white trunks trimmed with blue. Weighing in at 10 stone and half a pound. And ladies and gentlemen, this is his 100th professional contest. Would you please welcome from Buenos Aires, Argentina, Ricardo Silva. And ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks, trim with white, weighing in at 10 stone, one and a half pounds, 19 fight record, 17 wins, nine inside the scheduled distance, and just two defeats. He's from Brixton, South London, where he is known as Dangerous Ted Bambi. Timekeeper at the bell is Richard Clark. Referee in charge of the action is Mr. Ian John Lewis. And this is eight three-minute rounds. Tommy? I am the referee. I obey my command at all times. You both have the rules. Watch the heads. Kick them punches up. When I shout break, you break clean. And remember, defend yourself at all times. Shake hands. Eight rounder then, Ted Bambi in the royal blue trunks, flying out of Brixton in South London. Ricardo Silva in the Argentine national colours, white with pale blue trim in Buenos Aires. Big fight this for Ted Bambi, he's got world title ambitions. He's had one crack at a world title before, he fought Samuel Malinga for the WBF version, was stiffed in three would love a crack at Colin Lyons. That might happen, you never know. But both boys have got a win tonight. 
and in the shape of silver 99 fights so far 100 tonight there will have been nothing dave mccauley that silver won't have seen before in his pro career no and you can tell by looking at this guy's face look, look at the experience that he has on his face here total concentration he knows the game inside out he knows exactly what to expect from this guy he's probably watched video tapes the whole lot so hold on, hold on, this guy's wait. got a wealth of experience which money cannot buy but now, Bambi Bambi here has to like, he has to impress tonight because if he wants to get a crack at this, at this, at this uh, light welterweight uh, world title, he has to win here in impressive style and, hold and, and hold do a good wait. job tonight. But he's up against a very tough, wary old customer, and it's not going to be easy. It's very not going to be just so. plain sailing. And to make matters worse, as you're all fight veterans watching this now, you'll have noticed that Silva is a southpaw, right hand, right foot forward. And that always causes problems, David. Yeah, it makes things very difficult for you because they do everything back to front and it's very hard to nail them with a good solid shot, you know. They're a nightmare to fight. Oh, 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 I, I fought a few myself and uh, I didn't fancy the job at all. Well, there are two traditional ways to counter the southpaw. First of all, get your lead foot outside his lead foot, which prevents movement, and whack him with your right hand. And the third alternative, which is often recommended, is drown them at birth. <laughs> Which you would recommend, eh? Well, I thought so many, it was unbelievable. <laughs> Round one. Stop boxing, stop boxing. And Bami knows he's got to impress, and sometimes when you know that maybe your entire career could hinge on one fight, it stiffens you up just a little bit. You just have to take his time here, Dave. Work his way in, take things oh, no, nice wait. and easy. Don't be getting overawed or don't be getting overexcited. Just work your way in and work your openings and they will come eventually. If you keep at it, you keep working hard, your openings will appear. Well, the openings have already appeared once for Bambi because Silver bleeding from the nose and we're only in round one. Then go, then go! Stop boxing, then go! But you can bet everything that there is not a little wrinkle, a little dodge, a little ruse that Silver doesn't know and will use if he has to. Silver didn't go! Silver didn't go! Silver go! End of the first. Well, I reckon Bammy probably shaded that. Dangerous Bammy, well... Of the 17 wins, nine have come by the short route. And there is Daniel Silver. Nothing much happened in the opening round, just these two guys just feeling each other out, just to see. That was just, it was either a clash of heads there. I seen uh, Silva just clasp his nose. I don't know what it was, I just didn't see it properly there, but I think it was a clash of heads. But it always said it hurt. Here it comes again. Yep, oh, Ouch. clash of heads, yep. 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 Bang. And a little Silva winces, you can see. And the corner don't seem too concerned about that. No swab sticks up the nose to stop the bleeding. Just blow, thank you. Second round, round two. Second round then of the scheduled eight round light welterweight contest here in Brentwood. Bammy in the blue, silver in the white. Wait! Let him go, let him go, let him go. Here we go. Silver, hold it, let him go. John Lewis instructs Silver, order Silver, watch the holding. And this is what... Yeah, Bambi getting busy now. This is what he has to do, Dave. He has to get in there and knock this guy out of his stride. He can't stand back too much, you know. He has to just really let the punches go from all angles here. Once he gets in close, let them fly. Body and head. Well, that's absolutely right, because this guy is so experienced that if you let him, he'll just box on autopilot for eight rounds. You've got to knock him out of his rhythm. You've got to try and present him with something a little bit out of the ordinary, something that he hasn't seen Wait. before. Bammy, trying to work the opening. Centre ring, which is where he should be if he's going to dominate this fight. But he's... Silver, boxing well on both going forward and going back. It's a sign of an experienced boxer, that. Some boxers are very good coming forward, bad having to box on the retreat. 
Silva seems able to do it both so far. Scoring well inside, these little short chopping lefts to the body and head. Again, in John Lewis breaks them up. And you can tell that Silva's just going to try and spoil Bambi's rhythm. Just to sort of mess him up inside, hold, use that little bit of height difference he's got just to just make himself an awkward opponent. Yeah, what he's trying to do is that he's trying to frustrate uh, Bami here. He's trying to make him lose his temper, which is, a, a, is a, a big, big, big mistake when you're in the boxing ring. He's trying to frustrate him so much, he's hoping now that he'll just throw punches willy-nilly and run in and lash out. Look like he's doing now, you know. And, uh, no knockdown. No, he's not a knockdown. Wrestle to the canvas. But this shows you how frustrated Bami is getting so early on in the fight. He had to settle down and take his time and stop running in and jumping in and throwing punches from... from the, like we can see them from the back of the hall here, some of the, the punches that, that he's throwing. He's been too over-anxious. There's no real rhythm to Bami at the moment. He, he's, he's coming in behind big, quite wild right hands, and that's not doing too much. This is a ploy by Silva. This is a wily old dogger. He... Oh! He's not going to get a run on the bell. The count is seven, nine. It's all over. Out of the blue. Second round, clean knockout. That is a literally stunning victory for dangerous Ted Bammy. Boy, you couldn't see that coming, and Silva certainly couldn't see it coming. The first time he's been knocked out since September 2001. Watch this. Here it comes. Bang. Just as I spoke, a lovely right hand right. Bang on the chin. Full power of that. He just dripped it. He was trying to punch the back of his head there. He just nailed him right on the spot, and Silva was never getting up. Good stuff, fantastic stuff, clean right out of the blue. Nobody's seen that, not even your idea. Absolutely not. Fantastic win for Ted Bami. Well, amazing win for Ted Bami. I tell you something, we're going to pause for a moment to get our breath back. Join us back at ringside in Brentwood right after this break. Ladies and gentlemen, end of the second round on a count out, your winner from Brixton, Dangerous Ted Bammy. And please show your appreciation as he enters the Centurion Club, making his 100th professional contest, Ricardo Silva. Welcome back to Final Live. What a fight that was. Uh, Richie, were you expecting to win so soon in round two? No, I wasn't really. I think it was, it was turning into a little bit of a boring fight because Bami couldn't actually get his distance there. He was struggling with getting his distance. He was missing with shots. You could certainly see how Silver has got to 100 fights. Very, very cagey. He's a bit of a spoiler. But what a right hand that was. And never mind the right hand, I want to know how he did that cartwheel, because that's what I want to learn. <laughs> OK, let's have a look back at the fight. This is round one, it only lasted two rounds, so let's not beat, let's not beat about it. It's round one, this is when he cut his nose. I OK, thought, Spencer. Well, there we see a lovely uppercut going in there, and there seems to be a little clash of heads as well. It just seems to, yeah, there we see the heads going in. And Silva really feeling the weight of that. But to his credit, continued through the round and started to make things look a little difficult for Bami. Bami just getting a little frustrated and missing a couple of times with wild shots. But then he let that lovely right hand go straight down the middle. And Sylvie was never going to beat the count there. Tremendous shot for Bami. Now really the world's the oyster and he's got this shot at the IBO title and the shot that he's been looking for. He really fancies this fight. 
against Colin Lyons, and he needed a good performance there, and he showed I'll tell it. you what, that was fantastic. Now, you see Premiership footballers dive and go down. Man, <laughs> he went down like a bag of potatoes. Yeah. Um, have you guys ever been knocked out in the ring? I mean, what's that like? It's not very nice, <laughs> I'll tell you. When I was on the end of Joe Kalzaki's <laughs> bunches, then, uh, yeah, I could have done with you, actually, on that night. <laughs> but I'll tell you, that was a great shot, because the kid was actually going away from the punch. Most most knockouts are when your opponent's coming on to you, and obviously you're doubling the power. That, if you look at Silver there, he was actually moving back, so that was tremendous power from Bammy. Richie, we, we've seen Ted Bammy box before, and one thing that he does carry is power in either yeah. hand. If he connects cleanly, he really will take you out, and, and he proves it there with a brilliant shot. That was a great shot. Okay, it was a great fight. Okay, now it's over to Sarah with the man himself, Ted Dangerous Bammy. Yes, here we are. Congratula congratulations, Ted. How are you feeling? Oh, first of all, I would like to say thanks to my Lord Jesus Christ because of him that we in the fight. I praise him for it. And then I feel great. I feel great. I feel strong today. Ultimately, uh, your youth was, his experience was no match for your youth, was it really? We are, I knew his, his experience guy, his, his experienced fighter. He's a good fighter. I've seen his video. He's a good fighter, but now is my time. It's Ted Bamin's time. Absolutely. You know. How did you feel it went, James? It went according to plan. You know, um, first round it was a bit awkward, but second round Ted was getting into the fight and he done it in the second round, practiced the shot beautiful and delivered it beautiful. Look at that man, so self-assured, he knows what he's talking about. Let's have a look and you can talk us through some of the bits of the, uh, of the fight. So just tell us about the knockout, Ted. Well, I was looking for the, I was looking for the, for the shot. I was a warm you know, for the first run, so, and then when I was getting into the sec in the second round, I was getting into the fight, and then I just see the opening, I just took it. And you were obviously thrilled because it was a beautiful celebration. I'd like to see more of those. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, so, you think you're going to go for world title next? Is that what you want? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I wish uh, Colin Lyons all the best to win the fight, and then I would love to fight him. That's it. Well, Colin Lyons is coming up a little bit later, along with a lot, whole lot more fight night live. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> 